The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell, kicking off April trading. Happy April Fools out there to all of you. There's your warning. Be on the lookout for those April Fools jokes. No joke in here, folks. We got the Dow, negative about 800 points to start off a new quarter of trading, closing out the first quarter of 2020, one of the worst quarters the market's ever seen, one of the worst months the market has ever seen in month in March, excuse me. But nonetheless, we started off with the S&Ps right now, negative 91 points, trading at 24.78, a far cry from where we were early Tuesday morning, talking about 26.35. That's more than 5% that we are off of those yesterday highs. From the close yesterday, we're down about 3.5%. So occasionally, there's a glimmer of hope that we're coming out of this, at least in the market, in terms of finding that bottom. But we are going to see a two-way market for the foreseeable future, in my opinion, and this as this plays out for probably months on end. Um, and we're seeing it this morning with markets approaching down about 3.5%. NASDAQ, negative 215 points, trading at 75.70. As I mentioned, you got the Dow right now, negative 755 points, under 21,000, 20,996. We've got the gold contract trading right at about 1,600, 1,598.30. You've got oil trading 2026. We'll start things off. Let's jump over to the charts this morning. We'll start it off with the S&P. There's your acceleration from early yesterday morning. We were up there at about 26.35. You see the overnight action. There's your close of action in terms of 5 p.m. Eastern time yesterday, closing out the futures market at about 25.66. And it's been a slow decline the whole night. Currently trading 24.80, just made session lows within the last half hour of about 24.67. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar story. Yesterday action reaching a high at about 1030 in the morning of, we'll call it 8,000. We were six points shy of 8,000, and we just approached 7,500. So you're talking about 500 as, uh, NASDAQ 100 points from early yesterday to within 24 hours, currently trading 75.68. S&Ps we did cover already. Crude oil. $20.25. You back it up to yesterday, we were approaching $22 at one point, and we've just kind of been bouncing around between the lower end range being $20, almost on the dot there, up to a high of that range of about $20.50, maybe $20.75, right towards the lower end of that range in crude. Gold contract struggling as well. Gold actually making it to a low last night of 1581, 6 p.m. Eastern time last night. We climbed to a high at about 3.30 in the morning of 1611. You've got the June gold contract trading at 1599. And the euro US dollar back under 110 at 10925. Going over what we have happening in the market, we got ADP jobs numbers this morning at 8:30. That number coming out, 27,000 jobs cut before the worst of the coronavirus shutdown hit, ADP report saying. Market not really reacting to that. What you do want to be on the lookout, folks, is for tomorrow morning, we get weekly jobless claims last uh, week. That number coming in at about 3.3 million. This week, estimates that it could approach 5 million. I wouldn't be surprised. Macy's alone laying off 130,000 workers. When you have one employer laying off hundreds of thousands of workers within the span of a week, not hard to get up to millions and millions of employees. So that number coming up tomorrow. And then we'll get non-farm payrolls on Friday. Now, It'll be interesting to see because March really escalated in terms of the beginning of the month, not as bad and even close as towards the end of the month. But nonetheless, weekly jobless claims tomorrow at 8.30, non-farm payrolls Friday at 8.30. The numbers continuing to climb to scary, scary totals, folks. 874,000 confirmed, total debts 43,000 in the U.S., Man, oh man, 189,000. Now, the bottom right quadrant of this, this is the worldwide curve you're looking at here. You, you click on the U.S. number, 
And talk about parabolic, folks. We're up to 4,000 deaths, over 1,000 of those in New York City. Hopefully, New York City, send your thoughts and prayers out to them. Tough situation going on over there. And the worry is that that is going to reverberate throughout the country. And it's not just uh, if, but when, in terms of where we get this under control. What else we have going on? I'm going to jump through some of these charts. I found it interesting to stay on the COVID-19. Interesting article on CNN, uh, excuse me, CNBC this morning. Italy, U.S. and Spain have the most coronavirus cases and the charts showing their infection curves. Uh, we're in Florida. Florida, the numbers escalating as well. Very elderly population down here in Florida. Hopefully you get this under control, but you get down to the curve. So here's the U.S. curve, okay? You're looking at the yellow curve being the cumulative cases and that being the axes on the right. We're now at about 189,000. The blue being the daily cases, axes on the left. I mean, that's we just got 25,000 cases in a day, folks. Um, just staggering numbers. And you see in terms of how fast Things are rising. Talk about a parabolic curve. We are in no way about to approach the peak of this curve, in my opinion. You heard it from the president yesterday. Why don't we jump over to it? Scary numbers, folks, predicting 100,000 to 240,000 will die. And that is with the social distancing guidelines that we currently have in place already. Hundreds of thousands of Americans potentially passing away from this virus. And that's if we keep doing what we're doing in terms of social distancing. That is with precautions put in place, just scary numbers. So that's the US. Italy, they are starting to flatten that curve. Look at the daily increases, okay? So check out the US. We're skyrocketing here, folks, okay? We are in no way even comparable to the way that Italy may be flattening. Now, in certain regions, hopefully New York is flattening, but in other regions, it's not at all. You've seen the pictures of Clearwater Beach. You've seen the pictures of Florida beaches. You've seen the pictures all over the country of people congregating. That is why these are still spiking. In Italy, they've been locked down for two, three weeks, whatever it is. Finally, maybe these numbers on the daily case coming down, maybe some flattening of the curve in Italy, Spain, also, maybe some flattening, that peak in terms of daily increases coming about seven days ago. Look at China. I mean, zero. Uh, you know, in China, uh, they locked down their entire city. Not sure that's what you want the government to be able to do in terms of just literally locking people up 60 million at a time. Can't go anywhere. But quite a different cry when you look at 5,000, 10,000. Putting things in context, folks, we just added 25,000 cases to our numbers in the U.S. And uh, Germany, hopefully flattening as well. Interesting curves. Keeping in mind, though, when you look at all that compared to the U.S. curve, boy, oh, boy, those things are rising pretty quick there. That's for sure. What else we have happening in terms of stocks with action so far today? Uh, you know what? I'm going to jump around to real quick because this is the most important of them all, folks. Tom O'Brien, my dad, he did a great show yesterday talking about the stimulus package and the grants and loans available to small business owners across the country. If you didn't get a chance to check it out last night, okay, you can always access the archives right in the Tiger TV link, right in the front page of TFNN. Just hit that Tiger TV button on the front page. You can find the archive for the Tom O'Brien Show. But right on the front page of TFNN, I put both of these segments. So segment one, you can apply for a $10,000 loan as a small business. You can receive that loan within 72 hours, and that loan does not need to be repaid. It's a $10,000 grant available to small business holders, small business owners across the country. The second segment, going into the actual loans that they are providing, both right here. They bring you right to the YouTube clip on the front page, and then you have the links where you access the Small Business Association. I'll get into it more when we come back. If you're back in the, the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 90 points right now, Dow negative by about 771. So getting back into real quick on the front page of TFNN, as I mentioned, so Tom O'Brien, my dad, doing his program yesterday. He did 45 minutes, folks, on the Small Business Association Chamber of Commerce, the loans available as part of the $2 trillion stimulus that our government just paid. And folks, he went over it. We're paying for this with our taxes. Don't think that you're going in there and getting money that you don't deserve, okay? This is money we all deserve if you're impacted in any way, which it's pretty hard not to be impacted in any way, especially if you're a small business owner of any kind at this time. Go in here, watch these clips, folks. I put the links right to the YouTube archives right here. So you have segment one, where he talks about a $10,000 loan you can receive within 72 hours, and they call it a loan. Not sure why they call it a loan, because it's basically a grant. If you meet the conditions, you don't have to repay that $10,000. Um, this is the money that they basically are making sure that before you go in for a loan, maybe companies need money like right now for two to three weeks for payroll, for rent, $10,000. You don't have to pay it back to keep the economy moving. You just click on this link. It brings you right to the YouTube link. Okay, you can check that out. He's already got almost 500 views on this one. People really... Uh you know, taking advantage of this as they should. And then a second segment going in over the actual loans that companies can have. Now, the first segment, super simple in terms of what you're doing, you're applying for that. You really don't need, you know, many financials. You don't need to prove uh, with tax returns or anything like that to get the $10,000 loan. The second one that really goes into the loans that the small business will be providing, and they'll be doing that through your local banks, okay? Now, you can get up to $10 million, but that is contingent on providing some of those tax returns, I believe, for the two prior years. You click on that, that's going to bring you to that link, okay? We segmented it out. We split it up last night. We put it on there for you so you can check things out as easy as possible. I encourage you 
to check that out. Share that with anybody you may know. Uh, there's not enough good information, folks. We passed all this money, but you got to know how to fill it out, and it's really not that hard. So check it out on the front page of TFNN. There are your two links to watch the segments, and then right under that, you have access to actually the links that Tom goes over in terms of talking about. Here is the link for the COVID Economic Injury Disaster Loan Application. Okay, this is the one where you can receive up to 10 thousand dollars folks and you do not need to pay that back if conditions are met very very simple to fill out there not difficult at all and then he's also got down there um General information for the Small Business Association, along with the Chamber of Commerce Small Business Guide. There's your link there. It just kind of goes over what you can do, how you're eligible, what the lenders will be looking for, how much can you borrow. Now, this, again, is talking about the second plan. You can borrow 2.5 times the borrower's average monthly payroll cost, not to exceed $10 million. Huge availability out there for folks, for people in business, whatever it is. Check it out on the front page. Watch those two uh, segments. It's, it's uh, maybe the most worthwhile 20 minutes you might spend of your day, of your month, whatever it is, folks, as we got to keep this economy moving on. Jumping over to what we uh, have going on in the market in terms of specific stocks. So Goldman Sachs adding Verizon to its conviction buy list, saying it offers investors the most attractive combination of total return and risk thanks to the stability of its wireless business. Verizon, my mom used to be on a Verizon employee. She is retired at this point, but uh, she still has some Verizon shares. And this is one of the companies that um, perplexed me a little bit, right? Everything is getting hurt here where people have to sell no matter what it is, okay? But you have Verizon go from 62 down to 50, a huge dividend stock. And I don't see anybody not needing their cell phone or their internet at a time. Now, Verizon Mobile, the driver of all of this, really. But I imagine that going to have some legs still, though, even on the heels of that. We close at 53.73. We, uh, we're going to open at about 52.76. I happen to have some chart, some lines on this chart already. I mean, check out this... Uh, channel. We'll give Bud Rolfs, our channel master, uh, a little bit of a shout out. Um, we're going back to 2004. We're going back to 2010. Look at those lows lining up, right? We just touched down on these lows. Now we're on a monthly here. The upper end being at around $65, the lower end being at around 50. We came down and we hit putting it back on a daily for Verizon, flirting with going under that line to 48.84. But if you kind of do a linear regression right down to where we were on the lower end of that, currently trading at 53.73, you're going to open about a buck lower on Verizon shares this morning. Xerox dropped its bid for HP, saying it was prioritizing its response to the outbreak over all other considerations. Xerox had planned to put up its own slate of directors for election to HP's board, but has now dropped that effort as well. I mean, not too surprising seeing some deals fall apart in the, in the face of what we have going on here. So you have Xerox closed at almost 19 yesterday, putting this on a shorter time frame. There you see the drop going to open at about 18 so far today. And HPQ, those shares this morning, closed yesterday at 17.36, going to open at about 16.52. Home Depot will institute new safety measures in response to the outbreak, including earlier store closures and limiting the number of customers allowed into the stores at one time. The company has also increased paid time off for hourly workers. I happen to be at Publix yesterday doing some grocery shopping. So there's the drop there. Quite a drop indeed. 186 down to 179. Looks like that news hitting Home Depot. Uh, smart news, folks. We're all going to rebound by this. I showed you the curves at the start of the show so that you could really just stay in tune with how aggressive this is. And countrywide, we are nowhere near the flattening of the curve right now. Uh, in Florida, they say our peak may be early May. Folks, yesterday was March. Early May in Florida may be our peak as we have failed to do what we need to do to flatten that curve early enough. New York, they're saying maybe 17 to 21 days. Really harsh numbers when you look at where they are already. But Home Depot, 179 so far this morning. Their competitor, let's jump over. Lowe's trading lower as well from 86 to 82. I was going to mention I was at Publix. And uh, you got to be careful when you're out in the environment with so many people, folks. The grocery store, one of the areas that uh, by far I am 
um, in the neighborhood of more people than I am at any other time during my life right now. And just be aware, don't touch your face with your hands, right? Wash your, wash your hands when you get out of there. Use some sanitizer if you can. Don't touch your face and wash them when you get home, worst case scenario. Uh, but what I did see is that they had kind of a, a plexiglass type device device, uh, just a, a piece of plexiglass that they kind of put in front of the tellers to try and prevent those tellers from having to interact with people on a daily basis. Tough deal when you have people coming through those lines with their groceries on a daily basis, but all of these companies kind of doing their best to protect their employees. Kroger, $29 as we're talking about groceries. Check out that chart, right? 36 still holding up relatively well in the light of everybody doing some shopping. British American Tobacco, the cigarette maker's biotech unit, Kentucky Bioprocessing, is developing a COVID-19 vaccine derived from tobacco leaves that is currently undergoing preclinical testing. The unit said it could produce between one and three million doses per week starting in June. So pretty interesting when people like a tobacco company throw in their name in the in the bowl for people producing that vaccine. But nonetheless, trades from about 34 to 35 up a buck this morning. Becton Diag uh, Dickinson, the medical products maker and privately held diagnostic company. Oof, they're going to launch a test as well. BDX. Let's look at them. And we got more headlines after the break. Going to open a little lower and Macy's being removed from the S&P 500. We'll get into that in a moment. But Macy's four dollars and sixty percent. Stay tuned. Folks. Right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. S&P is negative by 86, Dow negative by 746 right now. Getting into it, so Macy's. Market cap on Macy's right now, $1.5 billion. That is not going to cut it for the S&P 500, folks. That's the smallest market cap in the S&P 500, and they will be coming out of that index as the Macy's, the retailer stock, being removed from the S&P 500 index and will be placed in the S&P small cap 600 as of April 6th. Macy's has a market cap of $1.5 billion, smallest in the S&P carrier global which will become a publicly traded company as of Friday, following its spinoff from UTX, will replace Macy's in the S&P 500. So you have United Technologies spinning off a company. They're going to be replacing Macy's as of April 6th. And man, the pain in Macy's, 130,000 employees, they're going to be furloughing. Check out that drop off. And what kind of uh, what kind of a chart do I, what kind of drawings do I have here? Okay, interesting. So I did, uh, yeah, look at that, look at that. So we, we got a 38% pop from the drop from 2015 to the lows of 2017, you climb all the way up to $42, and Macy's is going to open at about $4.60 from $73 just in the year of 2015. Quite, quite a reversal. Quest has pulled its previous financial guidance for 2020 as it tries to determine the impact of coronavirus on its results. A lot of these companies, folks, as I've said many times, if you're a public company and you have the ability to pull your guidance, I would do it. And you're going to open a little bit lower. The market making you pay for that, but nonetheless, uh, not as you normally would. Cisco is cutting out fresh food sales for its customers and focusing on frozen products. According to the Post, the food distributor is also said to be cutting out Saturday deliveries, product returns, and guaranteed delivery times. SYY is their symbol. 4362 closed at 4563 in the uh, focusing on their own logistics, I assume, to make sure they can deliver the most products in the quickest time. And Papa John's upgraded to a buy, P-Z-Z-A, looking to open at about 51. And check it out, folks, again, the front page of TFNN.com for those video links from Tom's show yesterday for those small business loans. And send that, folks, to friends, family, anybody you have that can use it. Great information.